Knights, Autobots, listeners. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sequel Pitch, the podcast where friends review a movie and then have a competition pitching the best sequel to it. I am your sober... I am your Cybertronian host, Andy Henry, and the Decepticons let out their high-tech jails. This episode, ah, he's the bad boy of the podcast who spends his time breaking into banks but not stealing any money. It's Optimus Crime, Ross Harmston. <laughs> I am Optimus Crime. <laughs> he's the Transformer who always looks on the brighter side of life. It's Optimus Prime, Matt Rushton. <laughs> hey, that's me. That's definitely me. And the Transformer, who can't be here today as he has to take his baby boy out in the stroller. It's Optimus Pram. Hey. <laughs> Pull the muscle stretching nice. for that one. It's nice. Drew Toynbee, unfortunately, couldn't be here today. But He still gets a fucking point, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he still gets yeah. the point. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not. Still got to talk about that, guys. It's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm, the, I'm last, so shut up. <laughs> I think Matt's most of Matt's points these so far are just <laughs> one points. So, oh, <laughs> hey, no! I'm a, well, yeah, I mean, it's usually because I come last, or I happen <laughs> to just not be on the episode. That's right. I hear you're very confident in your pitch today, so you'll be uh, you'll be ready. So fucking stoked with it, mate. <laughs> 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 so this episode, we watched the 2017 Michael Bay CGI fest Transformers: The Last Night, the fifth, somehow fifth in this franchise. Now, chances are you stopped watching this heap of mess off uh, of a franchise after the second one, like me. Uh, maybe you watched the third, probably not, but I'm guessing you didn't. You definitely didn't probably watch the fifth one. So let me save you two and a half hours by telling you what happens in our try to be 60 seconds, but we all know it's not 60 seconds synopsis. In 484 AD, Merlin. Yes, for fuck's sake, we're doing Merlin. Merlin <laughs> is given a knight, is given a staff by the knights of Achaeon. Is it Achaeon, sorry? Um, ah, fuck it, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? whatever. <laughs> the Knights of Achaeon are a group of Transformers who have been hiding on Earth, and they help King Arthur's men fight the Saxons and win their war. We then jump to 20... Uh, 20 uh, is it 2022? Okay, so around about now, Optimus Prime falls from space and uh, onto the ruins of Cybertron, and he meets his creator, the Cybertronian goddess Quintessa, who brainwashes Prime into becoming Nemesis Prime and sends him to Earth to retrieve Merlin's staff as they know they can use it to rebuild Cybertron by taking Earth's energy core. On Earth, Cade Yeager, just, a, as, just as a ridiculous name as Scythe the Rage from fucking After Earth, Cade Yeager meets a dying Transformer who gives him a strange talisman. He then meets Sir Edmund Burton, Bunt, uh, Burton sorry, played by uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, a member of the Order of Wiccan, w Wiccans, a secret society who guards the Transformers' existence, and Vivian Wembley, obviously an English character because she's got the last name of Wembley, an Oxford University professor who uh, is a direct descendant of Merlin's bloodline and the only one who can activate his staff. We learn the Transformers have been living on Earth for centuries, and Earth is actually a, un a Transformer called Unicron, <sighs> Cybertron's ancient enemy. Cade and Vivian find Merlin's staff, and Vivian uses it to awaken the Knights of Achaeon, but are forced to surrender it to evil Optimus Prime. Uh, Prime and Bumblebee then fight, and Bumblebee breaks Quintessa's spell over Prime by speaking in his real voice. It didn't take much. Bloody hell. It's a fucking movie. The Knights then try and op uh, execute Optimus, but Cade stops him with their sword by uh, his talisman finally having use and turning into Excalibur. Uh, the knights then join with the humans and Autobots as Optimus defeats Megatron and Bumblebee, Bumblebee appears to kill Quintessa and the Autobots leave Earth to rebuild Cybertron. But it seems Quintessa survived the battle and approaches two giant horns coming out of Earth. Wow, that's... <sighs> Let's go around and get everyone's Accurate. quick thoughts because I think we've got a lot of thoughts to give in our in-depth review, which you can head over to uh, patreon.com forward slash Sequel pitch to find out and hear our in-depth uh, uh, thoughts on this film. But yes, for now, let's just go around and get quick thoughts and scores on the doors. Uh, Matt, are you a fan of this franchise? And did you like uh, this? <laughs> I like the franchise for what it is. You know, right. it's not like <laughs> it's not in the same realms as Marvel and Fast and Furious and things like that. <laughs> but I didn't actually mind the first Transformers films. I rewatching Ready to Watch the Last Night. I rewatched Age of Extinction, the first one with Mark Wahlberg, mm. and really quite enjoyed that one. So I had high hopes for Last Night. Forgot how terrible this movie <laughs> was, but I did quite enjoy the last twenty minutes. So. Is it redeemed? Yeah. No. Is it a Transformers film? Not really until the very end, even though it's full of Transformers. Um, 
just so underwhelming and so tonally off. <laughs> yeah. So yep. I guess I'm going to give it two vulgar swearing Sir Anthony Hopkins out of five. So much needless language yeah. in this film. Yeah, he definitely probably has the most fun on his probably two or three days he had on set. Wow, okay, two. To be fair, it's higher than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Ross, thoughts and scores. This movie is a movie of uh, a two and a half hours movie. Um, <laughs> into, it's a convoluted, absolute mess of a plot. Absolutely doesn't know where it's going until, like uh, Matt says, right at the end where they can just do an action movie um, sequence. However... There's a lot of shit in it to fill up stuff. Loads of plot points that go nowhere. So for me, it it doesn't. I'm gonna give it one out. One Cogsworth being mental out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got some things to say about him as well when we get into the in-depth review. Cogsworth. <laughs> um. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm. <sighs> This movie's awful. This movie's script is awful. The characters are awful. The the yeah the 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 plot, the the timing, the editing, the, the everything about this movie is fucking terrible. I can't believe they've got <laughs> they've made a fifth one. I it like it, it must do well overseas because that's the only thing I can think of. <sighs> yeah, I mean like, I want to get into the in depth review so bad. <laughs> I'm also going to give it one out of five. I'm not going to even give it a funny uh, score. Because it's so bad, I'm not gonna. I don't want to like justify. <laughs> I just want to say one, one piece of shit, which I gave the same uh, one piece of shit to the Suicide Squad. I think as well. <laughs> wow, well, there we go. Nice. So nice. out of the three of us, <laughs> an average score comes in at one out of five. Um, but even though Drew is away, he has his own thoughts on Transformers. Let's listen to them now. It's it's real bad, y'all. It's real bad. Zero point five out of five. I'm done. So even though I should be the last person hearing pictures to a franchise that should have stopped after the first one, I can't wait to hear your sequels. Which means it's time to get your sequels pitched. As always, you'll pitch me your sequel, and then I might have a question or two for you afterwards. And once all the pitches have pitched, you can transform into knives or guns and shit and fight it out and prove why yours should get me to be excited about this franchise again. So let's start with Matt. A little bit of hope. Let's start with yours, shall we? I'm bringing you a fantastic fucking sequel. I'm promising. Did you just change your titles? Right, my title? <laughs> <You> just... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I told you it was primeval before when it was going to be a good yeah. sequel. <laughs> but I'm moving away from that with a new idea. It's called Transformers Groundbreakers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the Autobots are once again the only thing standing between Earth and total annihilation as Galvatron is back to claim what is his after waking an old, albeit very new, threat. Mm. Hi, Michael Bay. Take it away. Mm. Okay. We open to see a bustling Tokyo. People everywhere and the world is moving at a frantic but happy pace. This is interrupted in devastating fashion as the Earth starts to tremble before a huge hole appears and a worm-like machine chews through everything. We don't see much graphic nature because it is PG-13, but we watch the whole city is basically destroyed. We transition from that from like an aerial shot of what used to be Tokyo. We pull back, pass through like a screen transition, and we're in the Pentagon where the room is just completely stunned. And in the corner we hear, Devastator has returned. And a scrawny man, Shia LaBeouf, Sam Witwicky, is sat there in the Pentagon. Don't ask why, Michael Bay. <laughs> Credits roll. <laughs> <laughs> and so we return to the film and we see Mark Wahlberg's Cade... Cade, Cade was it? Cade, Yeager. Cade, not Cade yeah. Yeager. Cade, Cade Yeager. Alongside Vivian Wembley's there. They're happy. They're in love. They've got a field, and it's the Autobahn, and the Autobots are there. See what I did? Yeah. Autobots, where he calls Autobahn. <laughs> oh, fucking genius. See, you can sell that. With Autobots, they're all just chilling. They're enjoying retirement. Nothing's really happened for like a week. Um, but that's ruined because a police escort comes up the drive, 
Sam and a group of suits get out. They're not important. Bumblebee turns his back on Sam in a strop because he's like, who the fuck are you? I forgot who you are. Optimus welcomes his back and hopes he's been well. Sam explains that the Cyberwind, the people from Age of Extinction, were after him. And while they were around, he wasn't risking being in the open again. And that he's joined back up with the uh, with the Pentagon and the US government, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a really awkward bit with Cade and Sam as they discuss Bumblebee. Cade's looking after him and Sam's a bit like, well, he was mine first, probably like, whatever. You can make a penis joke out of it, I'm sure. <laughs> um, then we get into the juice of the visit. They explain everything that happened in Tokyo. They show the video to the Autobots and the humans. Uh, they all record, well, the Autobots, Cade won't because he was in his garage. Um, the Autobots recognize that it's Devastator from the Revenge of the Fallen movie but it moves differently now. It appears to one form and reform again, like fucking Galvatron did. <laughs> oh, no. There's a look of fear in the emotionless <laughs> face of, of Optimus Prime and all of them as the grim reality sinks in. They never actually dealt with Galvatron because I'm going to correct <laughs> Michael Bay's mistakes. And they just assumed <laughs> that Megatron was Galvatron and they didn't ask any questions and they can now be dealing with, yep, two Decepticon leaders. <laughs> So off they go. They travel to Japan and they join up with KSI folk. All those guys, not KSI, oh, yeah. the YouTuber. <laughs> not, the, not the YouTuber KSI. <laughs> not the YouTuber KSI, although he could probably do some good uh, yeah. good grime for He's the there drinking yeah, sound yeah. like a Prime bottle as advertisement. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, with, <laughs> with a bottle of Prime. I'm loving it. Prime sponsor. Prime sponsor yeah. this movie. Um, so they join up with Joshua and his love interest and they all have a good time. Uh, they're good guys now. Strategize, discuss stuff they've discovered, discuss countermeasures. Uh, but of course, the lab's attacked by Galvatron and some of the cha- shape-changing bots. Uh, they're not vehicles, they're dinosaurs. Why not make evil dinosaurs? Um, he's been bringing back ancient machines to fight for him, and he's given them all his cool shape-changing abilities. Um Prime, of course, didn't bring the Dinobots with him because they wouldn't clear customs or something. You make a joke, but they fight <laughs> anyway. The lab's destroyed. Joshua Joyce is injured really bad. He gives Prime a disc with a real heart-to-heart moment, says something that might help. It comes in handy later, obviously. So the crew will escape. Joshua is taken away to be treated in an ambulance, but as the ambulance leaves, the group look back just to see the devastation in the lab, and we see it swallowed by the Devastator. Double jeopardy, uh-huh. double sadness. We've lost KSI. Um, they decide to flee and regroup somewhere in the mountains or the hills, uh, and they determine what they learn from the lab. They analyze the findings, the final lab was studying, and they somehow realize that Megatron and Galvatron are two parts of a whole. They both exist simultaneously. They're interconnected, meaning that whilst they're both there, technically they're weaker because the other is existing and feeding off their life force. So, great idea. If they can find Megatron, maybe they could convince Megatron to come back and help them and kill Galvatron. So, that's what they do. Well, that's what Prime does. Prime heads off, meets him. They have a bit of a chat. They sit in the desert where they find him. He's a lone wanderer. He's defeated. He has no purpose. But Prime gets into his ear, gets into his head, fills him with confidence. He comes back and he's going to help the Autobots defeat Galvatron and the goons. Uh, load of exposition in amongst all this. Sam and Kate building a friendship with the help of Bumblebee. Sam meets another young lady from the KSI Foundation and they form a love interest. Bumblebee takes the piss. He's like, oh, nothing's changed. You found another beautiful lady, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the base is attacked a couple of times. Then we see a bigger attack and a bigger kind of fight scene. And the crew look like they're getting close to defeat. Uh, and then suddenly the cameras slow down, panning around, full Michael Bay styling, uh, and we see an epic slow-mo movie poster shot of Prime and Megatron bursting through a building together, and they're killing two shifters as they do, like, ripping them apart, and they're saving the humans, probably saving important humans. Big epic fight stuff. The Autobots win, uh, but they're all super sketchy about Megatron being there. He does seem like a changed bot, though, as he talks and he swears... That, they're, that he's there to correct what's been done. He doesn't swear that he's there to correct what he did wrong. Important. Noted. So then, <laughs> Act 3, we go full throttle. They locate Galvatron and the Devastator because they're super robots and they can do that. 
There's like a massive 45 minute <laughs> battle scene. Lots of pendulum swinging between who's going to win, who's going to lose. Loads of NPC good guys and bad guys die. Uh, Devastator 2.0 comes up and we see him eat one of the NPCs, the good guy NPCs. Optimus is enraged because it's one of his oldest friends we've never seen before. <laughs> and then he remembers Joshua's <laughs> disc. He puts the disc into himself somehow because he's magic. Uh, and suddenly he becomes the shape-shifting version of Optimus Prime. He has the ability now to kind of go into glitchy mode, pixel mode, um, and he obliterates Devastator 2.2, 2.0 doing that because he's so cool and he has a sword. Uh, then we have a final face-off. We have Megatron versus Galvatron. They square up their fighting. Prime helps because Galvatron's too powerful and then we see Galvatron and Megatron start to mi mimic each other's movements and predict each other, and they seem really in sync when they're fighting. Then it's like a light bulb clicks, and they realize why fight each other when they can work together. They turn on Prime and begin a beat down, and they're kicking him, lots of slow motion fighting, and like looks like he's dying stuff to camera. Um, just as Galvatron goes to land the killing blow, from behind, Megatron just sinks his fist into Galvatron, pulls out the glowing core thing he's laughing he's like <laughs> i was never going to team with galvatron really there could be only one he stands over prime remarks that this is the last time they will stand stand by side and he jet boosts away depending on if you want like a super evil megatron then maybe he can like crush prime's leg to really emphasize the point that he can't stand side by side because he's only got <laughs> one leg you know something like that uh, then we see the world settle from the reeling events once more. A wounded, probably very wounded Prime is being cared to by Cade and the Autobots back at the Autobahn. And then there's a credit scene showing Megatron attaching the energy core thing from Galvatron to himself. An immense power surge and then this new central laser ability that you can shoot out, just like Iron Man. And he shoots it out into the sky. The end for now. Oh, okay. Very good, very good. That was quite long, sorry. Uh, not as long as the other film, don't worry. So, I've got a couple of questions. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions. So, this Shoot. film takes place on Earth. Then. Yes, on Earth, Earth. Any reason why not Cybertron? Because didn't they... Weren't they going to Cybertron at the end of the movie, last movie? Oh, but it's like just hanging above their heads. Mm. It's not far away, so they can come back and forth. Yeah. And they quite like being on the autobahn. They've got their own sanctuary now. It's like a beautiful, like the the I don't know what's the place in Africa where all the animals live. Serengeti. It's like the Serengeti for <laughs> Autobots. They've got animal enrichment things there. They've got cool like metal things they can knock around. It's great. It's great fun for them. Cool. Okay, nice, nice. Uh, I like you brought back Sam. Um, I also like you say he's a scrawny man in the corner. This is our like hero <laughs> being introduced as a scrawny man in the corner. Um, what's humans aren't heroes? Humans yeah. aren't the heroes in my film. What's the relationship <laughs> between him and Cade? Why have you brought him back? And who's the protagonist basically out of him and Cade? Because I feel like Shia LaBeouf <laughs> needs to be part of this franchise still. It's really other than his mental breakdowns, kind of all he has going for him, maybe, in recent history. Um, I feel like it just gives a little bit of an Easter egg back to the to the fans. Um, I I always wondered what happened to Sam myself as a bit of a franchise fan. So I'd like, you know, using Cyberwind and hiding from them in the fourth and fifth films. But I feel like, especially when we've talked about w Wiki in The Last Night, it seems stupid that he just doesn't exist anymore. So this is my way of bringing him back with a bit of humour. You know, his character is a bit humorous and ultimately can't drive a story on its own anymore because he's been gone for too long. So this introduces him alongside Cade. They have, they're the humour, you know, the humans are kind of used as the more light-hearted stuff apart from when there's utter devastation in places like Tokyo. So he's just there as a nod. We bring KSI folk back as well, you know, because I feel like too many times Michael Bay doesn't answer the fucking obvious. Yeah. So I'm here to answer some questions. All right. Okay. Um, nice. I think that's all I have for now. Let's head over to Ross. What you... Okay. Mine's called Transformers 6. Unicron rises. Ooh, okay. Oh. 
Quintessa, now disguised, manipulates the humans and creates a, the cult of life in order to steal from Optimus Prime the matrix of leadership, which will kill Optimus and Unicron once and for all. Or is that truly what the Great Deceiver truly wants? Is oh that truly, God. truly? Shit. <laughs> You've done so o- much lore for this, haven't you? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Shit. <laughs> The film opens and we get a generic Optimus Prime speech about what has happened since the last metal movie sex fest. (laughs) We learn from dialogue that the humans and Transformers are still touchy, but they are working together and are both helping to rebuild Cybertron, which is dangling in Earth's atmosphere. We learn that Megatron and the Decepticons are still out there, as he survived from the last one, uh, and with the help of the human... Um, uh, with the help of the human uh, and the transformer and hu- the sorry, the, with the help of the T and H, the transformer and human task force, who are trying to locate them and put them behind bars. We then see Prime. He's in a UN meeting, and we learn he is now the ambassador for the Transformers on Earth. After the summit, Prime is ushered into a meeting. With the now head of Sector 7, it's John fucking Cena. Oh, yeah, bring in that. He, w- he was, uh, if you watch Bumblebee the movie, you'll know. Uh, we'll make him look old and shit as well. Um, Prime gets told that there is a special mission that he wants him to go on because they think they found Megatron. He says, cool, let's go. Sorry, he says, cool. Autobots, roll out. Um, We then get a montage of him going around and grabbing all the old team uh, who are all doing cool, funny Michael Bay stuff like the robots who love a hot country to retire (laughs) in and stuff like that. We then see Bumblebee. He's looking into a garage or something and there's a woman fixing a car. We see it's Haley Steinfeld, a.k.a. Charlie Watson from Bumblebee. Again, we'll make her look older. Prime interrupts and says we need him. Then we get that classic thing of Charlie looking up to where Bumblebee was and he's not there anymore. Um, We then get a scene with Quintessa. She is in the spire um we saw from the last one she is surrounded by humans and um decepticons and autobots uh some autobots with the same scars from the last one we hear a voice going through her head it speaks release me she addresses her call and says we must find the entrance to unicron so we can finally destroy it once and for all and Cybertron will be free. So the Autobots head to Iceland. That's where they got the um that's why they got the heads up where Megatron might be. So they get uh, they get, you know, you know, adds to the cool location shot. Uh, anyway, after some hilarious scenes in which one of the Transformers wants to sit in the Blue Lagoon. They head to where he was last seen. Um, They go into the underground cavern system and see Megatron and maybe some other bad guys from the comics. But alas, some... uh, But also some humans as well. Oh my God. They also see one of the prongs as well buried in the ground that they are looking at. Then we get some metal on metal action scene. No one knows what the fuck is going on, classic <laughs> Bay stuff. <coughs> anyway, Megatron is defeated and thrown into a high security jail. Megatron tells Prime that the human's time is over and a new threat is rising and nothing can stop the cult of life. Not even the Autobots. Prime thinks, whatever. And then when uh, then we get some more scenes of Prime and the gang taking out some people with the same markings calling themselves the cult of life. He then goes back to Megatron and forces him to tell him who these people are and what they want. Meanwhile, Quintessa learns of Megatron's capture and learns that Prime is headed to Cybertron. Um, So she gathers her cult and heads there too. So, meanwhile... Prime learns that Quintessa is actually alive still and she's amassing an army to finally defeat Earth and bring the destruction of Unicron. 
They go by the name of the cult of life, blah, blah, blah. Prime holds, and also he learns that Prime holds the key to his destruction. All the Autobots have a conflab, and the only way they can learn about what this is all about is to go to Cybertron. So the meanwhile should have probably happened before this because you would have learned that they need to go to Cybertron. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they need to go to the Cybertron to talk to one of the oldest Autobots, um, Prime's father, Alpha Trion. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Um, so they go. They say they head to Cybertron and they go through this cool Cybertronian tomb and they locate Prime's father. But only speak. The only way they can power him is to share Prime's spark with his father. But in order to do so, Prime will be inactive while he communes with his father. He does it, and when uh, when they see kind of the scene is when they do it, and it's kind of like Harry Potter. Like, you know, the scene where it's like all white and you see both oh, of the characters yeah. and they start talking to each end, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in the real world, Quintessa arrives with her army and, and have a massive fight in uh, in outer space uh, in, the, in the normal uh, world. Um, Prime learns from his father that Unicron and Primus were the most powerful Transformers of all and they had battles. Eventually, Primus defeated Unicron and had cast Unicron into space. Cron, not Crom. Cron into space by creating a 30, uh, the 13 original Transformers. Unicron slumbered for many ages. In this slumber, debris gravitated towards Unicron, forming planet Earth, of which Unicron is its core. Um, Primus transformed itself into what is now known as Cybertron. But the matrix of leadership inside Prime is the key. If you look back, that's where the matrix of leadership is because Prime was brought back to life by using it. Uh, it won't bring the destruction of Unicron. It will awaken uh, him and end all things. It will awaken Unicron. That's what... Um... Meanwhile, um, the fight comes to... The... We're near the end. Uh, meanwhile, the fight comes to a head... With Quin uh, when Quintessa rips the Matrix of Leadership out of Optimus Prime, killing him. Or so we think. Quintessa says, see ya, and then leaves. The gang feel defeated and are left with the body of Prime. They take his body back to Earth, and Bumblebee has an idea. He calls for help of Charlie Watson to help him fix Optimus Prime. They have a lovely reunion, and Charlie, with the help of Cade Yeager... Oh, yeah, he's still in the movie as well. They can... <laughs> <laughs> they also um they also need uh, megatron as well to help bring prime back to life uh sort of to give uh, so they tie up megatron and kind of do a similar thing of sharing consciousness with prime they go into this weird purgatory again megatron sees prime and immediately tries to fight him but Prime convinces Megatron that Quintessa is bad and that she never wanted to bring Cybertron back, but she wanted to bring Unicron uh, back to life. And it's all been a deceiving little game. Prime wakes up and then Megatron joins the team and they go to Quintessa's hideout. They arrive at Quintessa's hideout and she's about to put the Matrix of Leadership to awaken Unicron, but the team stop her and they have a massive fight. Although at one bit, Megatron is killed and Quintessa activates the Matrix. And like any typical action film, there's a timer thing that the Earth starts cracking and shaking and Unicron looks like he's going to activate, kind of like the fucking um, disappointing, um, whatever the fuck it was called, the... Immortals. The, the, the Immortals. Um, <laughs> and But po uh, Optimus pulls it out and kills Quintessa for good. Um, anyway, they all stand around Megatron, insert the Matrix of Leadership in him. He springs alive. Monologue of Optimus Prime to finish the movie. post credit scene of some bullshit to create another <laughs> Transformers movie. <laughs> there you go. Mine was very long. So, yeah. Some bullshit. Very <laughs> long. Keep the franchise going. Love it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. A couple of questions for yourself. Um, Go for it. So for, uh, at one point, you mentioned Prime's father. Is this is this like? Because yes. we know he was created by Quintessa. He still has. So he he, he did, She's the great deceiver. Oh, okay. So he. This is she actually. Might, she might. This. She might be lying. I. I want to release. I want to 
you know, we can explore that in later yeah. films. Yeah, where where they where they actually came sure. from. Um, but yeah, quintessens are a race of people. I've known of know this from doing my research. Uh, yeah, but yeah, in my movie. I think she was lying the whole time about saying that's why she wanted them to activate Unicron. And that's what the whole thing was. She wasn't actually trying to destroy um, Earth. She was actually trying to awaken Unicron the whole yeah. time. And so she was using them to, like, to try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next quick question just regarding human characters, because you said Cena's in it. Yes. In the but they are more cameos, aren't they? And then Keg yeah, Keg is the the human I, we're following. I think <clears throat> you've got. I mean, there will be they will be tagging like John Cena and all that, and all these other ones. I think John Cena's probably only in it for that bit where they capture Megatron, and then that's probably mm. it. Um, and then I think Cade is always just hanging around with him because he's got that fucking sword. Maybe like <laughs> he it turns it into a transformer like robot kind of thing. Maybe so as well, <laughs> just so that. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Haley Steinfeld, Steinfeld is just like a cameo at the end to like have that reunion with Bumblebee. Okay, cool, cool. Um, I think that's all the questions I have for yourself. Good, okay. good. Well, I can see Matt has half transformed good. into a weapon already, so let's not wait any longer. Why should I pick yours to win, boys? You should pick mine because I I carry on the franchise. I don't go back and I continue on where we left off from the from the last one with the planet site planet being like in orbit and I reference, you know, Quintessa and I bring in some of the, you know, lore of the films, you know, that Michael Bay loves to reference in his <laughs> movies. Matt just, you know, Matt's is Matt 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 is under the assumption, which is, yes, it's not stated in the movie, but it's also, it is, it's not stated in it, but it also is as well. Well, it's very ambiguous as to, I'm pretty sure Galvatron is Megatron, <laughs> um, just with a different body. So, I Galvatron mean... Galvatron was formed from Megatron's brain, yes, but that doesn't mean that Megatron can't reform like all the others keep reforming quintessa essentially reforms megatron in my opinion for the fifth film galvatron could or could not be what happened did he go into space did quintessa capture him and split? that was one theory that i thought about then thought actually no <coughs> fuck it what quintessa did is just <clears throat> make another megatron because quintessa can make them so she yeah. just went, I'm proud of you. I'm going to make another one of you that looks just like Ultron. And I'm going to send you down to planet Earth and really <laughs> mess up the uh, the franchise, blur the franchise lines. Um, I respect some of what you've done. I respect that you've continued in such a linear fashion when I have said that that is one of my biggest peeves with this franchise. But <laughs> I felt this was a good time to go back and fix Quintessa isn't going to be able to do all that overnight. It's going to take time. So I have time for my film to come in, fix some of the earlier mistakes with the media issues that are right in front of us. Whilst Quintessa is working in the background, I could chuck in another mid-credit or post-credit scene bringing her back. No, you can't you know, anymore. I can. You chuck just any old shit in yours, so this is <laughs> another shit I'm throwing in. Listen, Two post-credit yeah. scenes. Listen, yeah. I got, I'm just giving a more lenient You brought path. fucking... You brought... Um, Shia LaBeouf back. You no brought Cena to... and Hayley Steinfeld back from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, but everyone liked that movie. At least I was like, was in people... canon. and and also John Cena is gold to any franchise that you know he comes in. Maybe Shia LaBeouf's big return would be big bucks gold compared to John Cena cameo. No, you know it, Andy. You know Shia LaBeouf would bring more money <laughs> in returning to this franchise. There's no way, just that... like Andrew Garfield no... and Tobey Maguire brought money into the Spider-Man franchise. No I would one... do that for you, producer. No one wants to go back and fix all the things that were wrong about those other movies. That's, People want to just fixing news... the things from the fourth movie with such yeah. a fucking cool Pacific Rim esque badass in Galvatron. He looked way too sick not to have more screen time. And then you get Megatron and Galvatron and Optimus Prime. You get three of them. Why can't they coexist? Well, because Megatron's a dick is why. But where does because your story go from there? Where's your story go from there? 
And we've got Super Megatron, who puts the core into his chest and yeah, you've shoot already, lasers yeah. into the <laughs> what does into that, space. What does he do? What does he do from then? Well, he just he might have destroyed something in space that brings more aliens to planet Earth <laughs> because they're like, oh, that was dangerous. We need to destroy that. See, I Quintessa's set up. there. Quintessa could plant it in with super mega hole burning core. Like Quintessa is still alive in my film. I'm just yeah, giving but you her didn't even break. yeah, but like this is the fr- this is the bad guy that they've set up, and you've just gone. Nah, I'm not dealing with that. I'm just gonna go back to the old what shitty one. What did they do with we've... Venom Carnage? What? <laughs> I didn't see it, so I don't fucking know. <laughs> do some old shit. Yeah? Films do it all the time. They tease bad guys and don't use them. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's not fine. People want to see Quintessa and what she's going to do with Unicron. You don't mention any of the like the outfall, like the 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 stuff from literally a planet size scraping along. Because- it was uh, quite difficult to do that because I'd written the first half of my pitch before I'd finished the film. <laughs> <laughs> Hence well, why I had to change my title and change things <laughs> in my pitch because I hadn't see, finished the fucking see, film. I, I make Optimus <laughs> Prime ambassador for for mm. Earth. Yeah, the um, shot of him in the UN a... would be quite funny to see, like him like behind one of the desks yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> There's I tasteful humour in Prime. yours. I'm actually very impressed with what you've delivered and as a franchise fan, I would like your film. <laughs> However, I think mine's better and more action packed, and it has more mine's of a pull into it. Mine's got loads of action. Mine's yours got is, yours has got a sprinkling here and there. No, they fight in <laughs> Iceland. Yeah, then they go and find uh, other. They go on little other missions to find other cult members as well, uh, and then they have the big fight at the end with Quintessa, and they has and they have a fight with Megatron in his own mind as well. So. I'm giving you loads like, of different... Again, I like some of those Harry Potter vibes, <laughs> but it is, it's been done before, so it's, it's okay. Doesn't mean that it's bad, yeah? Doesn't See, mean I it's destroy, bad. I destroy one of the economic capitals of the world to show how dangerous these guys have become. <laughs> yeah, you, you know? bring back the, the the Hoover from one of the <laughs> yeah, fucking but now old it's, films. Yeah, now it's the metal worm. It's way more than a Hoover now. It fucking <laughs> burrows through and can burst up and burst out, like... So what you've done is create a metal dune. Is that what you've uh, created? In Tokyo. <laughs> All right, look. Pick mine, Andy. Yeah, just get this over and done. Okay, with okay. Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> in the words of Anthony Hopkins, Edmund Burnton, shut up, shut up and get off the suppering. Um, <laughs> wow, okay. Honestly, both of these films actually would get me excited to go back and see them in the cinema. So well done. Um, yes, let's start with Matt. I like your bringing in, yep, Transformers from other movies. Um, the Megatron Galvatron interconnection, I think, could be quite cool. Um, um, the three fight, uh, three trans, like the three Transformer fight at the end when Megatron actually saves the day could be quite a good little twist. twist. Um, yeah, and I think we could probably have a bit of fun with Sam and Cade and their relationship, and maybe if. You know, if uh, Sam's all business-like or something now, and yeah, Kate isn't, but yeah, very, uh, very interesting. And then, I mean, triple threats, man. You know, triple, triple threats. threats good. Look at Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Gunter at <laughs> WrestleMania. Probably fight at <laughs> the weekend, all right. So I'm giving you that. Well, uh, in I know you were saying right. about Ross's uh, Harry Potter homages, uh, and you do end your film with basically the same as. Voldemort ends the seventh movie where he just gets the big wand and the fires up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's bad, but just the way you were like, oh, Harry Potter. I was like, didn't, didn't. I, I feel like Russ and I had some very big similarities yeah, in our yeah. pitches. I just don't want to talk about it. Clearly, Harry Potter and Transformers yeah. are yeah. 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 canon. <laughs> um, Crossover. Ross, I like your. Yeah, I'd like you bring back Bumblebee, uh, Bumblebee characters. Um, yeah, you both try and actually makes sense to this franchise which is nice um i do like how yours isn't on uh earth the whole time i think you, you said you got a nice cool space fight um yeah i like the harry potter but a purgatory kind of scenes that you're talking about um and i respect the the law you've done well done well done but Thanks, there can only be one there can only be one so since third place i guess automatically grows to drew Second place. Well done, well done Drew. Drew. Well done. Second place <laughs> is going to go to Matt. 
well done. Uh, Fair. I'll take very that. close. I'll take it was that. very close. I will give the uh, the victory to Ross this week. Well Yay, done, Ross. I've lost my losing Wee. streak. Well done, Ross. Yeah, I like. I think yours. Um, yeah, yours has got more potential, I guess, to carry on the franchise possibly than Matt's. Um, what? No, he literally <laughs> ends it by saying, "I give you a post credit scene of shit." <laughs> like I, I find that as a flawed argument, but I absolutely yeah, take that. Yeah. that was a I mean, I like I like Quintessa's <laughs> deceive um, and and all that lot. I think yeah, it would be um, yeah. And I think there's a, like if I again, I might be slightly wrong, but is your yours Ross seems more based on like the the film actually, or the story seems more based on the Autobots or the Transformers rather than humans and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I want it to be more transformer heavy rather than yes. about all the fucking humans, yeah, which we don't no one care about. about. So well done, well done, Ross. I would have given yeah. you the automatic victory if you placed the whole film on Cybertron just to get us away from fucking oh. Earth and humans. But well oh, done, big yeah. big round of applause. That's enough. Why don't you tell us what we're going to be reviewing and pitching next episode? Okay, we are going to be pitching in the next episode sequels mm. to, and this was a suggestion, I don't know if it's off air or on air, by our lovely friend Mike Bithell. He suggested that we should do this franchise. Mm. Well, not franchise, uh, sequel. <laughs> it is the 2010 Tron Legacy oh, sci fi action great. movie. Interesting. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one to do. One of the best film soundtracks fucking ever. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So oh, good. I have to think of soundtracks now as well, aren't we? For... Bonus points for yeah, good soundtracks. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm here. Start writing mine now. God, we've done so many films with good soundtracks recently. God, it's getting harder <laughs> and harder. <laughs> <laughs> so please start thinking of your ideas. And just like that, another sweet episode of Sequel Pitch is over, but head over to Sequel Pitch on Twitter to let us know who you think should have won and if any of our pitches would have got you back in the cinema and excited for another Transformers movie. And don't forget to head over to patreon.com slash sequel pitch to hear our full in-depth review of Transformers The Last Night, where you can sign up and become a pitch pal. Yay! Pitch pal! We are! There we are. So it's goodbye from third place runner-up Drew Toynbee. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye from our second place, Matt Rushton. Bye. Goodbye from our winner, Optimus. Uh, Optimus win. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Armston. I have witnessed their capacity for courage. And though we are worlds apart, like us, there's more to them than meets the eye. I am Optimus Win, <laughs> and I send this message to any surviving pitch pals taking refuge amongst the sequels. We are here. We are waiting. See, that was really funny, but I, I, I did also did an outro like that, which I can't do now. So well done. <laughs> I'm Andy Henry. Thanks, Ross. You dick. See you next oh, episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was better than mine, to be fair. Well done. <laughs> and that's how you show up your host. <laughs>